Learn Excel from Mr. Excel podcast episode 2337. Analyze polar flow cycling data in Excel. Hey, welcome back to the Mr. Excel netcast. I'm Bill Jelen. Now, hey, look, there are two audiences for this video, and the first audience is going to be completely new to me. This the first audience is for cyclists who are using a polar heart rate monitor and the polar flow uh, app. You go out, ride your bike, it monitors all that data. It gives you a cool dashboard. Can't complain about the dashboard, but you know, you want to take a look at your data in Excel. So this video is going to show you how to take that data from Polar Flow, download it to your computer, and then a fairly deep dive into two rarely used Excel functions. Even if you use Excel all the time, odds are you haven't used get and transform data. It was new in Excel 2016. And then the 3D map feature. So I'm going to show you both of those, go through it. Uh, very nice and slow. Now, this requires Excel for Windows, Excel 2016 or newer. If you're using Excel on an iPhone, Excel on Android, Excel on a Mac, Excel on your Commodore 64, sorry, it's not going to work for you. Now, the other audience, my regular Excel viewers, hey, how's it going? Uh, great to see you again. A couple of things that are new here for you. First time that I've ever loaded XML data into Power Query, I had it. Uh, expand table, expand table, expand table, expand table to get to the actual data. Didn't look like it was going to work, but it worked. And then near the end, using two layers in Power Map. Depending on which audience you are, you might want to open the table of contents down there in the video description to jump to the right spot for you. By the way, for my Excel fans, this was going to be part of my Excel Virtually Global 2020. My one hour session is on mapping data in Excel, but it was too long. I ran out of time. Uh, if you happen to be watching this in July of 2020, July 21st through 23rd, there are over 50 Excel gurus each doing a, a seminar. The whole course is only US $24, Australian $33, all proceeds to charity. Click out the link down there in the YouTube description. Uh, just going to be some, some great things. I can't wait to learn from all these other Excel gurus around the world. All right, so now for those polar uh, cyclists who use the, uh, the, the heart rate monitor, let me show you what my dashboard is going to give you that I don't think that you're actually going to be able to get in the uh, dashboard in Polar or even if you take your data over to Strava, uh, either one. So we're going to switch over here to another workbook that I've already built and that I've been using for a couple of weeks with my rides. All right, so here's the workbook that I built a few weeks ago and I said, oh, this is cool. I should do a video about it sometime. Uh, so it has the time, latitude, longitude, distance in meters, BPM. That's my heart rate and then miles per hour. Yeah, here I am in the United States. We're one of the last countries that are still using imperial units. Uh, if you're in anywhere else in the world, you're going to convert this to metric. Uh, but what's really amazing, other than just being able to get this data in Excel and, and look for various trends, is this feature called 3D Maps. 3D Maps. Uh, this was originally introduced after Excel 2013 came out. It was an add-in uh, and then Excel 2016. And it lets you take that data in Excel and visualize it on a map, or in this case, an actual satellite image of my neighborhood. So here's, uh, you know, the ride that I, I did when I, I first did this. And there's uh, a time slider down here. I can actually animate the whole ride, right? So, you know, here's, here's me taking off from the house and you can watch this whole thing unfold very fast. And yes, they let you replay this in, uh, you know, in Strava, I know has, has a replay. But what's different, I think, with mine is that I can go to any particular scene and I can zoom in. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and, and drag up. And what I have here is the green is miles per hour. So right there, I was going 12 miles per hour and red is heart rate. So 107 at that point. So I can see as I'm increasing or decreasing my speed, does my heart rate go up or down? Uh, and this video, admittedly a long video, and I hope that the cyclists stick with me. I'm going to try and go really slow and show you how to build this. The awesome thing about using Power Query in 3D maps is, let's say tomorrow you go on a different ride and you download a new ride from Polar Flow, right? We're going to put it in the same folder with the same name. I call mine polar.ccx. And once you've taken the time to follow this video and build this, then we can go to uh, the data tab and click refresh all, right? And the, the 10 or 15 minutes you spend to analyze this data the first day will automatically update. And you see that this, for me, is a longer ride. All right. And let's see, I need to fill in some mile per hour data over here. That's one thing I couldn't do in, in Power Query. And some of my regular Excel viewers are going to say, oh, you can do that in Power Query. And I'd love to hear about it. Um, I just 
it was something that I could not get to work. All right, so there's uh, my data in Excel, and then we go into 3D map. So insert 3D map and open that, and then a second refresh. So we're going to refresh twice. All right, and so now I have a completely different ride. This is actually a ride uh, from a couple of weeks later, and I'll rotate this around, and we'll go back to the very beginning here. All right, so this was uh, one of my longest rides where I kind of rode around Merritt Island here. Uh, for me, 13 miles, which I realize for most of you cyclists is nothing, but trust me, uh, when I moved here back two months ago, I could barely ride a mile and a half. Uh, so for me, that was a, a huge victory to be able to do that. and. We're living here in Florida. The funny thing about Florida is when I see my friends on Strava and your rides where you gain a thousand meters in elevation. Yeah, we can't do that. My house, the elevation of my house is eight, literally eight feet above sea level. Uh, and I remember on this particular ride, one thing that was funny to me is I was had to go up uh, over the Sea Ray Drive bridge. And that, that was going to be challenging for a couple of reasons. First off, Sea Ray Drive has been closed since Hurricane Matthew. Uh, so no traffic is allowed to go there. And first I asked one of my cycling buddies, I said, hey, can you get through? He's like, oh yeah, you can get through. There's some barriers, but they moved one of the barriers away so a cycle can get through. Uh, a lot of cyclers ride that area. And I remember that just going up over Sea Ray Drive here, uh, up over that bridge, I don't know, it's probably an elevation gain of maybe 20 feet or something like that. I remember that that for me uh, felt kind of brutal. All right, and so let's take a look at this data trying to get the perfect look here just as I get up to the bridge. And so that little stretch there where I go from completely flat uh, up to the top of the bridge, I'll just grab this slider here, very, very, like right at the approach, I'm going 13.67 miles per hour. Uh, and by the time I get about halfway up the bridge right there, that 13 or 15, I was actually going 15, and then it falls off to 9.2. For me, that little hill was the first time, really, I'd encountered a hill. All of Florida, at least here in Merritt Island, it's flat. I mean, it's, you know, I might go up on a curb, that's my elevation. And check out my heart rate, uh, was up in a zone that I generally don't get to, up 126, 127. Usually I'm down in the 115 to 120 range, all right? So this was good. I was able to see the speed go down, the heart rate increase, and, you know, just something that I remember from the rod, I'm able to come back and actually analyze that data in Excel. So having both the speed and the heart rate here together, point by point, uh, was interesting. And then once I hit the peak of the bridge, all right, all of a sudden then I now get to go downhill that little bit of the bridge and back up to 11 miles an hour. Uh, you know, and you can go back and just see, like here I hit some sort of a max of 17 miles an hour on that nice straightaway after the bridge. All right, so that's that's the goal here. For you, the cyclists who are not regulars on the Excel, podcast. Uh, that's that's our goal. That's what we're trying to build here. Now, I wrote out all the steps, uh, 31 steps, and trust me, if you go through this, use the pause button. Uh, you will be able to follow these steps uh, and build this very cool dashboard yourself. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use uh, the polar uh, flow.polar.com website. Go to your dashboard uh, find some ride that looks interesting and uh, choose that ride. And then all the way down here at the bottom is something called Export Session. And they offer you three different file types, TCX, CSV, and of course, as Excel people, CSV, that's the way to go. No, it actually turns out that the TCX has more information that we need. And it comes down here as a TCX file with my name, the date, all right? And because we want to be able to build this once and reuse it again and again and again, uh, we're going to go and rename that file. And what I've been calling it is polar.tcx, because you'll see in Power Query, we're going to teach Power Query that we're looking for a file called polar.tcx. So I'll take this old file, I'm going to rename it uh, polar big loop. And then the file that I just downloaded, I'll right click and rename that. Uh, to just be called polar, so polar.tcx. And if we take a look at this, I was able to see that it had uh, the latitude, uh, the time, the heart rate BPM, uh, sensor state present, which is not something I needed. And I just kind of looked through the XML here, and I was able to find that it's uh, all tucked inside 
so right before the time, something called track point, which uh, is, seems to be the element. So we're looking for a, uh, an element called track point in the, in the uh, data, and the track point is contained, where's the very first track point, uh, in something called track, uh, and that's in something called lap, right? So we're gonna drill down through lap, then track, and then track point uh, in order to do this. So we have a file called uh, polar.tcx. I'm gonna put it in my downloads folder. For you, of course, it's gonna be a different, it's not gonna be Bill J, it's gonna be something else. All right, so we just come to a blank worksheet in Excel like this, and under data, uh, get and transform data in Office 365 is the leftmost group. Back in Excel 2016, it was the third group. It was over here. So look for get and transform data. We're going to say get data from file, not from a workbook, but from XML. All right, and they start out here in this folder. So I'm going to paste the downloads folder, and they're looking for XML files. But what Polar is giving us is a .tcx file. So I'm going to go to change that to all files. And there's my polar.tcx, click import. And again, you want to be careful. If you're going to take the time to do the next 20 steps, make sure that you've renamed this to be polar TCX. That way tomorrow you're going to be able to redo all of this in two clicks instead of having to go through 20 steps. Click import. All right, they're establishing a connection to polar TCX, which means that they're analyzing it. Uh, they have here something called author and activities. Activities is expandable, so expand activities and then something called activity. Now, got to tell you, this does not look really encouraging. There's only one row that they can see, but there's something called lap, and we're going to be able to expand that lap. So uh, we choose activity. Don't choose load. Choose transform data. And hey, for the cyclists, you use Excel at work all the time, right? I get it. You've probably never seen this screen here. This is called Power Query. It's the most amazing thing for taking ugly data uh, and cleaning it. You clean it once and then it'll remember those steps and help you clean it again next week, next month, tomorrow, next hour, um, you know, whatever. Okay, so the segment of the XML that we're looking for is inside this field here called lap. So when I look at that, it has all kinds of great information like how many calories, average heart rate, and so on. But really, the only thing that I want from here is the thing called track. In other words, the, the tracker, the, the, the track point. So I choose that and click OK. And now I have lap.track. And when I expand that, it has something called track point. That's great. Click OK. All right. And then finally here, once we get to track point, that's where I get time, position, distance in meters, heart rate, BPM. Sensor state is just saying whether the sensor was sending data, and I don't need that, so I'm going to uncheck that part. And I don't need this to say lap.track.trackpoint.time. I just want it to say time. So in this case, this is the actual important one. I'm going to uncheck the box for use original column name as prefix. All right, and so now I get ID, time, uh, position is still table. We're going to expand that in a minute. Distance in meters, heart rate, BPM, uh, training, creator, and the sport in this case was biking. I don't need these columns out here, so I'll right click and say remove those columns. For heart rate BPM, when I expand that, there's only one option, it's just called value. Distance in meters will keep, and then position, this is what's gonna allow us to map the data because it has latitude and longitude. And so right now it all looks pretty good. We don't need this column on the right, so right click and remove. See, Power Query is just a little bit different than Excel. In, in Excel, we'd right click and delete, uh, but this was written by the SQL Server Analysis Services team. All right, now we need to fix some of these up. You see they're all left aligned. That means that they're text. That's really bad. First, we choose this time column, go to transform and change it to a time. Oh, that's bad. Screwed that data up. Where's Control Z? If I want to undo, you come over here to the right-hand side, Applied Steps, and uncheck Change Type. All right, so I choose Time, and we'll try Time, Date, Time, Time Zone. All right, and that works. Beautiful. And then these four, these are all text. I'm going to click here and Shift-click there and change this to a decimal number. All right, Time, Latitude Degrees, Longitude Degrees, Distance in Meters, and Value. That's really BPM. Um, 
it's annoying that I'm going to rename these four, but I'm going to take the time to rename these four. So right click and rename. This is one of those things that I have to rename these once. And while it takes me a minute to rename them, I'm going to be looking at it every bike ride, you know, for the rest of, of the summer. Uh, so rename, we'll just call this longitude and latitude, right click, rename. All right, so these are the fields we have, time, latitude, longitude, distance in meters, and BPM. You say, well, wait a second, where's speed? I know that my app is telling me what my speed is. They're actually calculating that on the fly. And this is the one I'm hoping that Bill Sizz or some of my Power Query friends uh, show me how to come in and do this. I don't know how to do this in Power Query, so I'm going to do it in Excel. Shame on me, but you know, I'm just trying to get it done and it's, this is just for us, right? It's just, just for fun. All right, so on the Home tab, close and load. And it goes out and it brings that data from polar.tcx uh, into Excel. And now we're gonna add a new uh, column out here called miles per hour. And what we're seeing here is the data is coming in. Let's see if I can reformat this to show a second. The data is coming in and we're getting one data point every second. Beautiful. That's how the heart rate tracker must be working. It gives us the latitude and longitude and how far we've traveled since the beginning of the ride. All right. And so I didn't really trust that from second to second, this would really be that accurate. Like right here in those two seconds, it said we didn't move at all. And how is that possible? How is the bike standing still? Uh, so what I've chosen to do is to take the distance that I traveled in the last 10 seconds last 10 seconds and I did some math uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna accept the fact that the first 11 first 10 data points here are all gonna say zero so I type zero and control enter and then my first formula is going to be equal the distance at this point but I don't want to use the table nomenclature uh, so I'm actually gonna type equal d12 minus d2 so how far did I travel in those 10 seconds times a number here 0. 22374154. That's a crazy number. I'll put a little uh, graphic up there on the screen that shows you how I came up with that number. So I was going nine miles per hour, which sounds about right for the beginning of a ride. Double click and copy that down. And you see I'm kind of there at the beginning going eight, nine, 10 miles an hour. Sounds about right. I try and shoot for 10 to 12 miles an hour on my, uh, you know, on, on my bike heart rate. Looks about right, started out in the 90s, kind of hopefully should get up to, oh, this was, this was a slow ride today. Oh well, all right, maybe tomorrow will be better. All right, so now I have that data. And the beautiful thing is I can do anything I want with it. I can sort it, I can filter it. Uh, you know, if you just wanna get the data in Excel, here you are. But I think the awesome thing is to be able to take this and visualize this data, create a pivot table in essence on a map. So 4,579 rows loaded, that means it was 4,579 seconds of data and we're going to analyze that data on a map so just choose any one cell on the insert tab come out here to 3d map 3d map like that a lot of people have never used this feature it's a great way to visualize data uh, provided you have either street address city state zip uh, or latitude and longitude which is what we have here so uh, verify that they chose latitude and longitude as the types uh, if you hadn't renamed these, if this still said degrees latitude or latitude degrees, good chance it's not going to work. And you have to choose these fields and choose latitude and longitude. Uh, for the height, first one I'm going to do is the miles per hour. And then I'm going to take the time field and drag it down to the time drop zone. Now, right now, it doesn't look that exciting. Uh, you have to scroll your mouse wheel in, scroll in, scroll in, scroll in, and you will get this view. Navigating here is a little weird. You can use these buttons to tip the data, to look at it from above or look at it from the ground. You recall what you want to do. You can rotate the map left and right. Uh, this down here is called the scrubber and you can use that to animate data over time. All right, so I'm going back and forth there and then back home. But what's really weird is somehow here it says that I was going 134 miles an hour. And that clearly is not true. There's no way I was doing that on the bike. And this 
with all due respect to the Polar Company, just means that there was a screw up and they happened to give me a couple of data points at the same second. Uh, so over here where they've automatically decided to sum the miles per hour, we want to create something called an average. All right, and now it kind of peaks out at 18 miles an hour and that's possible if I managed to find a nice little hill that I could have been going 18 miles an hour. Uh, so at least that seems to make sense. All right, now let's customize this a little bit. First thing I want to do is I want to come up here to themes and change from the white theme to the uh, satellite image so that way I can see what's going on and as we actually zoom in you'll see that these squares are way too big. So over here on the right hand side and by the way if you're back in Excel 2013 you didn't have this layer options. Uh, the height and thickness start out at 100%. I want to take those down to about 10% or so. You can just type in there, that would be even easier, 10%. And the thickness, 10%. All right, so now you can start to see that. And this was speed. For me, speed uh, means green, so I choose here miles per hour as green, like that. Choose whatever green you'd like. All right, and now if we watch this data animate over time, I click the play button. See, we took off from the house. Oh, this was the day. Uh, this is a funny one. My sons were in football. They used to uh, do this drill where they would start from the goal line and run out to the 10 and back to the goal line, out to the 20, back to the goal line, out to the 30, back to the goal line, out to the 40, back to the goal line. And if I think it's going to rain that morning and I don't want to get that far away, I'll do that same thing where I always start at the house and then do this loop and then back to the house, this loop, back to the house, this loop, back to the house. So this was a day where I was doing uh, those kind of runs, always going back to the house uh, just to to pile on miles without having to get too far. All right, so, so far, so good. It's looking great. Let's add in the heart rate data. Uh, so up here, we'll click Add Layer. In the new layer, Latitude and Longitude. Uh, this time, it's gonna be beats per minute is the height. And again, change that to an average. And take the time field and drag it to the time box like that. It's funny that they uh, somehow decide to go back out and change the zoom. Uh, we have to zoom in again. Uh, and then layer options here. We'll change the color for beats per minute to red. And this time for the thickness, I'm going to go really narrow for the thickness, like 2%. Uh, and you see, think about it, miles per hour, I'm going 10 to 15 miles per hour, but heart rate is 90 to 130. So it's just way, way too tall. So here I'm gonna take that 10% and move it back to maybe 3%. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, so that way that's just enough that the heart rate sticks out above the miles per hour and I can still see them both and see how they're, uh, how they're syncing with each other. They're in sync with each other. Uh, do I need the legend down here to show me that red is heart rate? No, I can probably remember that. Do I need this legend to show me that green is miles per hour? No. I can probably remember that. All right, so check this out. Uh, a new way to analyze your uh, bike ride using the, the Polar Heart Rate Monitor through the Polar Flow app and then downloading it to Excel and you can animate that data uh, in Excel. Go look at any point of the ride, see where your heart rate was. Are you going up a hill or down a hill or what? Um, for those of you new to 3D map, click on the map and then scroll away from you to zoom in, scroll back to zoom out. Uh, the Alt key is the magic thing here. Alt and up, drag the map, map up to look from the ground. Uh, you can even look out like that. Or Alt, drag down. Uh, and then if you want to go look at a different, like if I want to look at it from this neighborhood, so Alt left or right will spin so you can see the data there, right? Isn't this wild? People use Excel. There's 750 million installs of Excel. Most people have no clue that this awesome little feature uh, is back there in Excel. Uh, it's called originally called Power Map, now called 3D Map. Uh, anytime you have uh, geographic data in Excel, uh, you, can, you can do this. All right, so now to get back to Excel, file, close. Uh, the next time that I open this file, I'm going to a little annoying text box here that says this has 3D maps. Uh, I just move that text box out of the way. Okay, let's show you how tomorrow we get a new file and we want to change that file. So I'm going to take this, save it, close it, 
All right, it's overnight. We're going to go back to our downloads folder. And I'll just take another TCX file here. So polar TCX. I'll take this one, right click, rename, call it polar. All right, so now I have a new file called polar. I'm going to go back in Excel, reopen. It says external data connections have been dis disabled. You choose enable content. And then on the data tab, like let's see, right now we have 4,580 rows. I'm going to click refresh all. Wait till the loose spinning goes away. And then now we have 2,568 rows. That last time there. We'll see if we can copy that down and make that work. Yeah. Miles per hour. Sometimes the miles per hour needs to be extended. Always go check that field. So that was one refresh and then back into insert 3D map and it'll sh still show the last ride. Uh, but we can do refresh data again. All right. And so there's a completely different ride from, uh, you know, a month ago, June 19th. Uh, much shorter ride that day, uh, I'm sure. All right. So there you go. Uh, using 3D map and Power Query to extract the polar heart rate data from your polar heart rate monitor to show your progress along a cycling route. I'm sure that this would work for walking, for running, uh, for anything where it's monitoring the latitude and longitude data. All right, before we finish up, for my Excel friends, don't forget Liam Bassick's amazing course, Excel Virtually Global. Uh, 50 hours of Excel content for a ridiculously low price, all the money. Uh, going to Doctors Without Borders. Uh, if you like these tips, please subscribe and ring that bell. Feel free to post any questions or comments down in the comments below. Uh, my new book, Mr. Excel 2020, Seeing Excel Clearly, click that I in the top right-hand corner uh, for more information. I know this was a long video. I want to thank all of those folks who are cyclists, who are brand new to the podcast. If you use Excel a lot, check us out. For my regular Excel fans, sorry they went a little bit slower than usual today. Hopefully you picked up a couple of tips or tricks along the way. Also, hey, for those of you who are on Office Insider and you have uh, a home subscription, go out and check the data tab and see if you have a whole bunch of new things here. I have been dying to show you this, but all of my uh, computers apparently for another two weeks are stuck where I don't get it. It's driving me crazy. There's all kinds of great new stuff. Uh, so watch the podcast. I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another netcast from Mr. Excel.